Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will continue on the topic with the eigenfrequencies and eigenmodes, but this time we will specifically talk about mode superposition and the modal decoupling of our equations and the normal equations, which we, which we get after we decoupled our system. So let's jump right in. We have a system that has a mass and a stiffness map stiffness matrix. So this is already linearized, how to get those linearized equations of motion. We covered that in the last videos. So here we continue with that we have those matrices as given. So to solve that system, so to solve for Q, we have a coupled set. This is the most important part, a coupled set of differential equations. So we can solve uh, one equation first and then the next one and the next one we have to solve all of them together at the same time and we have a additional force in our system so a force on the degrees of freedom that we have and working with a system like that is very difficult so we have a second order differential and we have those initial conditions that we have to follow so instead of solving the whole system at once, which is very difficult, we can use the orthogonality of the modes that we covered in the last videos. So we got the eigenmodes and eigenfrequencies, and we saw that they are M and K orthogonal. And our goal now is to find N uncoupled equations that we can solve one after the other and then combine them to get the solution for our Q. So in the videos before, we got our XR, which are our eigenmodes. So we have X1, X2, and X3, and so forth. And those eigenmodes are linearly independent. That means that they are not, we cannot factor, or we cannot multiply one to get another uh, eigenmode. Multiply one eigenmode with a constant to get another eigenmode. So they can be used as a basis. And we will now define our solution. So we have our Q that is basically just a sum of those eigenvectors pre-multiplied with a time function. So we have our eta, that is our time function, and it will look something like time function 1 times eigenmode, eigenmode 1 plus time function 2 times eigenmode 2 plus and so forth. So this is our time function that we need to find because we already know the eigenmodes. And the differential, if we differentiate it twice, we only have to differentiate the time function because our eigenmodes are constant. So let's put that into our equation that we had here at the beginning. So we have our mq double dot plus kq equals to p. So now we substitute our q's and our q double dots and our q with the sum. The next thing we do is we project or we pre-multiply the mode xr. And we saw that if we have a mode that is orthogonal that is not xr, it will disappear. So xr m or transposed xs is zero. So if we pre-multiply, so project onto mode of R, this sum will disappear and it will disappear here as well because we have M and K orthogonality. And what we are left with, we pre-multiply on the left on the right side as well. What we are left with is XR transposed times the mass matrix XR times our twice differentiated time function plus xr transposed times the stiffness matrix times xr because all those xs's fall away and only one xr is left time our eta our time function and our pre-multiplied force that we had in addition to our system and we know that this will be our modal mass and this will be our modal stiffness so now if we remove that part, so we divide by our modal mass, we will get just the time function plus our eigenfrequency squared 
times eta is our new uncoupled normal equation. So this is our time, um, our function that is also divided by our modal mass. And we change from gamma to omega because omega squared is gamma by omega uh, by There we go. So now we have a set of equations from R to N that we can solve individually. So they are not dependent on each other. And because we have, of course, a derivative twice in time, we also need those initial conditions. And we get those initial conditions by also projecting into the modal space. So we have initial conditions given right there, but they are in a physical space and we need to project them into the modal space. And we do it the same way we did with our solution. So this is our equation for the initial conditions. And now we have to pre-multiply with M and pre-multiply with XR transpose. So let me write it out. So we have we pre-multiply, we have our Q, we pre-multiply with M, pre-multiply with XR transpose. So we have to do the same thing for the right side. We have X trans, XR transpose, M sum XR new S. This sum, sum goes away. This will be our modal mass. And then we just divide by the then we have then we want to get this eta so we divide and that's how we get our function and eta will look something like a times uh, I think it starts with a sine omega t plus b times cosine omega t but this will be we will be covering this in another video. So the most important part that you need to understand is that we are going from a coupled set of equations to a uncoupled set of equations. So let me summarize again. We do that by projecting onto a mode. And because we have mode orthogonality, all the modes that are not this mode that we project on, they will fall away. And that's how we get rid of the coupling. So we're only dependent on XR. So we will have equations that will look something like this. We have mu1 times eta double dot 1 plus gamma 1. Nu1 is something. And then we have mu2 times eta double dot 2 plus gamma 2 times eta 2 is another thing. So these equations, we can solve them one by one. And after that, after we found or better solved for the etas, so we got our etas, we can then inject them into our physical space solution and get our physical answer for this coupled set of differential equations. So again, we simplify our system because solving all at once is very difficult. We know how we can exploit uh, M and K orthogonality to get a set of N uncoupled. Here we have N uncoupled equations, solve them one by one, and then just add them back, back into our physical space, and we will have the solution. In the next video, we will be talking about the frequency response fa function and about some exercises. So if you have any questions about this video, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. And in, the other, in any other case, watch the next video so you will know how we can work with those uncoupled equations. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.